All right, welcome everybody today. Um, thank you. Let's open up in a word of prayer. Hallelujah, Father, we thank you for the opportunity. We thank you for the word. We thank you for um, your guidance, your direction. We thank you for your provision. Uh, we thank you for your protection. We thank you for your comfort. We thank you for your salvation, Father. We, we thank you for uh, prosperity. We thank you for health. We thank you for wealth, Father. We we thank you for forgiveness. We, we thank you for uh, the sacrificial lamb. We thank you for uh, Jesus the Christ. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord God, that you are I am. Yes. Thank you, thank you, thank you. In the name of Jesus, amen. All right, so a uh, little bit different today. Uh, we are going to get into the word. Now, not going to be in the word very long, uh, but I need to give you the principal foundation of where I'm coming from today. Um, a few months ago, I came out and we did a giveaway here at the church back in March. So it's been a couple months. So there'll be some people coming in um, that were a part of that. There's people here that are now a part of that giveaway that we did just so we can get them inclimated with the financial. Now, um, you're at church and this will be uh, spiritual in nature. Um, but not only will it be spiritual in nature, it's going to cover something from the world, which is your finances. I know a lot of people that come to church and pray to God for money. I'm just keeping it real. One of their top prayers is bless my pockets. Now, this is not a name it, claim it um, situation. This is not the pie in the sky. This is not um, you about to wake up tomorrow morning with a million dollars in your mailbox. So claim it. That's not what this is. This is practical. This is uh, kingdom building. This is uh, letting God bless the work of your hands. And this is walking by faith and not by sight. And this is being a faithful steward. Um, last week, I covered the parable of the talents where the master, the Lord, had gave each servant a certain amount of talents. And if I remember correctly, it was five talents, two talents, and one talent. And the person with the five talents flipped it, did double. Second person with the two talents flipped it, had four. The other person went and hid those talents, that one talent. And then what I remember clearly from that is that the Lord, the master, has said, well done, thou good and faithful servant, to the ones that flipped the talents. And I'm using flipped as a, as a term that we understand by um, um, what we do today. They invested it and brought back more, if I could say it that way. And then there was one that hid it in the earth. And then when the master came back, the Lord came back, he called him lazy, slothful is what the word that the King James version used in that. And he said that he will throw you in outer darkness. If you keep reading, he says, I will throw you in outer darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Now, I'm not going to get that deep into that parable because um, that's what I had talked about last week. But today, um, instead of that parable, I'm going to bring you back to uh, Ecclesiastes 11, 1 and 2. That's where we're going to start. So if you can turn in your Bibles, you see these beautiful people up here? Yeah. So <laughs> Yes. Yeah. So if everybody wants to go ahead and turn with me in their words to Ecclesiastes 11. Now, last week, I only covered a couple scriptures in here, uh, but I'm going to go a little bit deeper for you in Ecclesiastes 11. Now, the version of the Bible that I'm using, if you have a Bible app, uh, is the KJBAAE, which is just the King James Version, but it has the Apocrypha added edition. But KJV, essentially King James Version, is the version that I'm reading from here. Okay. Y'all with me? Okay. So Ecclesiastes 11 um, reads as such, cast thy bread upon the waters. 
So uh, last week I, I I had somebody read it in their translation. Is there somebody that has some other translation than the King James that they're reading? Somebody got something different? Okay, can somebody else read their version if they have a different version than the King James? Yeah, I'm sorry, I was uh, Ecclesiastes 11, yep. Right where we were last week. And can somebody read their, their verse one if they're not in the King James? Or is everybody in the King James today? I'm, I'm actually in the NIV, but which which verse? Starting at 11.1? Yeah, just read 11.1 for me. Um, it says, Shoot your, your grain across the sea. Uh, after many days, you may receive a return. Thank you. Thank you. Helen, what does yours say? This is, I got the New King James version. You got the New King James, and what exactly does it say in there? Cast your bread upon the water, where you will find it after many days. Okay. Maya, what y'all got? Y'all got King James or y'all in some? Huh? New, King James. New King James. Okay. All right. No, no, that's perfect. So um, grain and bread, right? What is grain? What is bread? What do we call? What do you, what are they talking about here? Let's, let's deal with this scripture before we go any further. You think they talking about literally taking your loaf of bread and just throwing it on the water? Do you think that's what the scripture is talking about? In, in the real world right now, what do we call money? Bread. bread. <laughs> right? We call, I call money bread. And then so when they're talking in this Bible verse right here, they're literally talking about taking your money and casting it out there. Now, that may seem crazy um, to just throw some money out there, but you're throwing the money out there for a reason. I need y'all to stay with me. And it says, for thou shalt find it after many days. Now I'm trying to get you to see what they're talking about here. And it says, give a portion to seven and also to eight for thou knowest not what evil shall be upon the earth. So stay with me here. I'm going to break this all down for you. So you understand this. Then I'm going to go just a little bit deeper. Then we're going to get into the finance side of this. So they're talking about investing. They're talking about flipping money. They're talking about taking something that the Lord has given you and making it more because the Lord's provider of it all. Verse two, it says, give a portion to seven. If you've ever read anything on financial books, most millionaires are have seven streams of income or more, multiple streams of income. That's what it's about. And so the word is saying, give a portion to seven. So it's giving you that number that most people that find financial success are born and also to eight because you may need to go above and beyond. It's the average person. So some have seven, some have one, some have a hundred in order to get to that average, right? And then it says, for thou knowest not what evil shall be upon the earth. So you don't know what the future holds. Just because everything is fine now, you should be thinking about the future. You should be thinking about a legacy. You should be thinking about a heritage. You should be thinking about passing something down because, but you don't know what's coming. And so that means you can't spend it all today. It means proper money management. Just because you get the figures, the bread, a lot of people can't keep the bread. They don't know what to do with the bread. The more they make, the more they spend. They never let their money make money for them. And this is what this is talking about, letting your money make money for you, and it comes back. Say with me. If the clouds be full of rain, I'm in verse 3, Ecclesiastes 11. If the clouds be full of rain, they empty themselves upon the earth. And if the tree fall toward the south or toward the north, and the place where the tree falleth, there it shall be. Verse four, he that observeth the wind shall not sow. So, you know, our illustrious pastor, uh, Bishop Jerry Booz, is all about sowing and reaping. So if you've been around Second Baptist Church any amount of time, then you should be familiar by now. I ain't got to preach on sowing and reaping. He's done a phenomenal job of that. Now, whether you're sowing or not, that's between you and God. The instruction from God is to sow. Now, your sowing should be into your congregation, your local assembly, 
And you should also be helping others that need help outside of right here. Because chances are you're not coming, sitting here, helping nobody here. Let's just be real. You're not generally doing that. There's more people out there that need help than that come and sit here most of the time. But you start here. The problem for a lot of people is they don't have the means to help. So how can you be a blessing to others when your finances can't help yourself? And I'm just, you know, and finances is not everything because health is way more worth than your finances. So let's just be real. And there's multiple areas that God blesses us in. But today I'm teaching on an area that a lot of times we don't get taught on. And then so with that, that, that financial side of wealth, um, I'm blessed and highly favored, but I've been broke my whole life. Now, maybe your attitude has been great through your brokenness. But I know a lot of people that can't generate finances. And so their their attitude is where their finances are. If their money's good, their attitude is good. If their money's bad, their attitude is bad. And then your finances can't control your attitude like that because then it becomes your master. And then we should be mastering finances. There's nothing wrong with mastering the finances, but the finances can't master you. And um, how do you think that you know, to whom much is given. How? How are you going to get that? How are you going to get much? You have to be responsible with the little. Mm -hmm. And so how do you think David was blessed beyond measure? Because he had the wisdom to be able to deal with the blessing. God is not stupid. He ain't going to give you something and then just let you keep messing it up. Now, he'll test you with something just because you've been crying and begging, God, please, if I just had this one time, I would do it right. He'll show it to you. And then you'll see for yourself that you should have prepared and used his guidance, right? Stay with me. Now it says um, in verse four, he that observeth the wind shall not sow. What does that mean? So if you sitting around daydreaming, doing nothing, observing the wind is watching nothing. Can you even see it? You can see the effect of it, but can you see it? And then it also says that, and he that regardeth the clouds shall not reap. So regarding the clouds is just sitting back, laying up, being lazy, not doing anything. Because if, you re if you're regarding the clouds, how could you be productive in life? You're not doing anything. And then it says, and thou knowest not what is the way of the spirit, so you know not the way of the spirit, nor how the bones do grow in the womb of her that is with child. Happy Mother's Day. The phenomenon of coming to birth in a woman, and this is not a Mother's Day sermon, but a woman bringing a child to birth. The Bible says, I knew you when I formed you in your mother's womb. So son, there's no way that you could be here without the Lord knowing you already when he formed you in her womb. He already knew. And these instructions have been set in place. This was wrote years ago. If you understand that Ecclesiastes is part of the original Hebrew Bible. And so the Hebrews read this in the congregation. This is what was read. It was a book of wisdom. We use a couple scriptures out of Ecclesiastes, and that's about it. Uh, but we won't go into a wisdom book. Now, as we continue, Ecclesiastes 11.5. Nor how the bones do grow in the womb of her that is with child. You don't know. Even so thou knowest not the works of God who maketh all. And then I'm in verse 6. It says, in the morning sow thy seed. Hey, look, look, it's the morning. We're going to sow some seed this morning. We're going to be active in the word this morning. I didn't write this. I promise you. I don't know if you read it before, but I didn't write this. And it says, in the morning, sow thy seed. And in the evening, withhold not thy hand. What does that mean? Keep doing it. Keep doing it. Keep sowing. Keep generating. Keep it going. Legacy, 
wealth. You need to be the leader doing it. You need to be the person walking by example. I don't care if nobody else is doing it. You need to be the one. Do you think that I cared if anybody else was doing the things that I'm doing? No. You know why? Because it's about me and mine and leaving something for them. And that's the way the mindset should have to be. I am truly sick and tired of people feeling like I have enough. And as long as I'm okay, that's selfish. You can't help anybody else. It's a short prayer to be broke. Can't help anybody else. It's so selfish. As long as I'm okay. And I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm human too. And self-preservation is the first rule of nature. And if you don't have yourself together, you can't help anybody else. I get all of that. But if your thought is just for me, 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 and nobody else, why would God open up the windows of heaven to pour you out a blessing that you don't have room to receive? Why? Why would he? Give him a reason to do it. Give him a reason to do it. Test him in this. Give him a reason to do it, right? And then so... It says in verse six, it says, for thou not knowest whether shall prosper. You don't know, folks. You know why you don't know? Because that's from the Lord. It's from the Lord. You can try. You know why you got to have multiple streams of income? Because you never know which one is going to work. He didn't say just pick a stream and, <laughs> you know, you got to have multiple streams of income. Isaiah 43, 19 says, behold, I am doing a new thing. And it was streams in the wilderness or wasteland, depending on what version you read, streams or rivers. It wasn't a new stream popped up or a new river. It was streams, rivers, which represent what? Wealth overflow in multiple areas of your life. And then so it says, for thou knowest not whether shall prosper. You don't know. You truly don't know. And as I explained to them, uh, the people that were here last week, um, I made some decisions I felt were guided by God a thousand percent. And they turned out to be not successful. Uh, Mrs. Pounds, I'm specifically talking about JT's Vape Zone for one. Yeah, I was praying everything I could pray, location, business, a partner, name, products, now, later, Lord, you guide me. And I stayed there for 18 months and lost money every month, every month, 18 months. Prayed to God to release me from this losing financial nightmare. Like prayed because I didn't want to just leave. He went and released me for like 18 months. And as I shared, I never understood at that time what, what that reason was for, for me to be in that losing endeavor. Um, but I met a ton of people during that time that financially, the business relationships that we had still going on to this day, proved multi-times way more successful than, you know, that 18 month period in time where I was losing, where I was investing where I was sowing, you know, not only my time, but my money, time and money. And then I also realized that the point of sale system that I had from there was my link to being able to continue taking payments here later. My processing got shut down. Anybody in business in here? Okay. If you can't take credit cards and you get a lot of credit cards, that hurts. So my credit card processing was shut down. And then so I popped open the old processing system that I had from up in Michigan for that 18 months. And then my stores was right back online. And we used that processing for six to eight months. Saved my life. But little did I, I didn't know. Like I had no idea that God had put that in place. So when you really making some money, that you got something to continue really making some money. Because I wasn't making no money there but it allowed us to process at all of our locations. So I understand how God works and we may not even see it while he's doing it. And then so we continue to walk by faith and not by sight, but we have to have biblical financial principles. 
Money's mentioned over 800 times in the Bible. So we need to deal with the principles surrounding it. But knowing that the success of that, our success, our wellness, our, 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 our real wellness, our physical wellness, our mental wellness, mental health. Can I say that? Mental wellness. Is there a mental wellness, right? <clears throat> Everything depends on the Lord. Everything. And so we have to submit our finances to the Lord. We have to. We can't be renegade about it. So um, it says in the end of verse six, either this or that, or whether they both shall be alike good. And I'm going to read verse seven. Truly the light is sweet and a pleasant thing is for the eyes to behold the sun. But if a man live many years and rejoice of them all, yet let him remember the days of darkness, for there shall be many. There's going to be days of darkness. The Bible is letting you know that you're going to go through dark periods in time. You're going to go through them. Health-wise, financially, socially. Areas of your life will suffer at times. All that cometh is vanity. So um, I wanted to cover that with you today um, from the spiritual side of things. And then um, I want to give you a little bit more background of what we're going to get into today. So the the, the financial landscape is changing. Um, don't know if you watch the news. Don't know if you see what's going on with the banks interest rates, just crazy financial times, digital dollars, banking system. I don't, I, I can't, I don't, I can't predict the future. I don't know what's going to happen. However, I am positioning myself and my family to be okay, regardless of what happens for me. And that's to the best of my ability. Now there's multiple different ways to position yourself. Can somebody tell me what the old standard was before paper dollars? What was the standard? Uh, gold. Gold. And so you have potentially a world going back to the way the financial system used to be. And chances are most of us don't have much gold laying around. You might got a gold ring, gold watch, something you try to melt down. Or you might got a gold bar somewhere, one big gold bar sitting somewhere. But I'm going to tell you, when it comes time, if that's in our time, people that are listening, you can't take a gold bar and go buy a loaf of bread. You're going to need a smaller division of something. If I have this bottle of water to sell you, drunk or not drunk, and you ain't got no water, you would be willing to pay me for a half drunk bottle of water because you need some water and you can't get none. So this half drunk bottle of water actually looks kind of good to somebody. But if you don't got dollars, you can't use your bank. You can't use your debit card. You can't write a check. You can't walk into Toledo Urban. You can't do any of that, right? What are you going to do? You ain't got no money. How are you going to transact? People barter in exchange. You're going to start giving away your rice and beans so you can get some bread, but then you're going to need some rice and beans, right? So the gold standard, precious metals, is one way that you need to consider putting some things back for yourself. Small divisions of gold, small divisions of silver. You can go right to the local places that are reputable to buy gold and silver. You don't have to jump online. You don't have to do anything crazy. You can go right to the local places that are reputable but you can do a quick search and buy gold and silver at just a little bit over the price. Now, this is not a gold and silver talk, but this is one of the suggestions that I have for you. Begin to accumulate some smaller divisions of gold and silver. Secondly, everything's digital right now. Everything is digital. How many of you guys got cash app? Raise a hand if you got cash app. Okay. All right. That's digital. They're not literally going in your bank taking the dollars out of your bank and then sending them to somebody else. They're digital dollars. And if you can't see, I'm going to help you see today which way the world is heading. 
is heading towards digital assets. Assets that are digital. Assets that are not held per se on your safe, they're digital assets online that still have value. When you send money cash app to cash app, don't that still got value? You allow that you can swipe your card and use it still. Venmo, Zelle, PayPal, just to name a few. This is the future. These companies are not invested in this technology if that's not what's coming down the future. How many of you are familiar with Bitcoin? By a show of hands, Bitcoin. Um, I've been in Bitcoin since 2013 or 2014. In and out, in and out, up and down, up and down. But Bitcoin is way up since when I got in. When I got in, Bitcoin was low as $3,000. Now, it's people that have experiences of Bitcoin when it was less than $3,000, but I'm talking about my time frame. Right now, it's $27,000 for one. So even if 10 years ago, you would have bought a $3,000 Bitcoin, be worth $27,000 right now. Ain't going to get that at the bank nowhere. Nowhere. Nowhere near. Nowhere near. And there's tons of digital currencies. There's tons of digital assets. And so today, um, I want to introduce to some people uh, one of the projects that I'm in, uh, which is called C12. And then those of you that are already in C12 because you were here, last time, then I am going to introduce to you a new project, but the people that didn't get in C12, the first time going to C12, and the people that are already in C12, I got a new one for you. Um, and when I say new one, let me be more clear. Um, there's multiple ways to get money. And so the Bible said seven, eight, right? And so today I'm going to show you one, C12, and then, like I said, if you're already in C12 from the last time when we're done with the C12 people, we'll get you going on a new one. All right. Um, I want to tell you a little bit about C12 before we get into it. Um, and so let me pull it up on, on my side. And I need to give you a, a, a brief overview of what C12 even is, because a lot of people may not even understand what I'm about to get into, but I'm going to help you to understand today. All right. So. I need to first of all say, I am not a financial advisor, all right? Um, I'm a risky guy, you know, um, all investments carry risk. I don't care if you put it in a 401k, you put it in an IRA, anybody got 401ks or IRAs and watch it go up and down? Okay, so your investment is at risk. It's nothing guaranteed, no, no, no guarantees in investing. And so you always have to understand that whether it's something I'm talking about or whether you're investing with a friend or family member, you're going to Merrill Lynch, you're going in this stock market, this money market, this mutual account, this annuity, I don't care. Your money is at risk. Anytime you take your money out of your pocket and give it to somebody else to flip it or to make you more money, right? Bring you back a return on your investment, it's at risk. I just need to tell you that. And then so each person has to examine their risk their risk appetite, their risk health, what what they're what what they're comfortable with risking. And everybody's different. And so I always tell people, no matter what you're investing in, only use risk capital. What does that mean? That means only use money that you can afford to lose. That you can afford to lose. Because as I covered in the scripture, there's no guarantee on anything. It's up to the Lord. And you don't know why he would lead you to do something, but you just need to be obedient and do what you feel like he led you to do. And then the results of that are the results, but there's generally a lesson in it, whether you get the lesson now or you get the lesson later. And so that's what we do. We walk by faith, we not by sight. Now, being wise managers of money, people have lost money. I've lost money. I've lost money in multiple ventures. I've lost money in multiple of these platforms I'm going to talk about with you today. Now, the reason for these platforms, these take you outside of traditional investing. Uh, what's the interest rate, anybody, that you get from the bank or your money market account? Anybody? Monthly, weekly, yearly? Somebody give me a number. Anybody? 
Okay, one point something percent per year. Per year. Hold on, I need to drink some water. So, if I heard you correctly, you said one point something percent a year. Okay. Anybody getting more than one, one point something percent a year? All right. So there's some mutual funds that are a little more aggressive that you can get between six to 10 percent a year. You know, a little more aggressive. Right. And then there's also people that do real estate and other portfolios that they'll do 20 to 40 percent a year. So think about this. Right. First of all, the bank is only giving you one percent per year, but they're making money. They're making way more than that. How do you think the mutual funds are able to give the 6 to 10%? They're investing in the same things that the banks are investing in, but the banks is giving you crumbs, right? And then after you go another step up, you get into these fund management systems or then even just investing in real estate. And like a really good real estate person, if they did 40% in a year, they are knocking down the real estate space. Would you agree? 40% a year is knocking it down in the real estate space? You take a hundred grand and make it 140 in a year, you killed it in a real estate space. You take a million, turn it into 1.4, you killed it in a million in the in the in the real estate space. But what if I tell you that I'm in stuff that makes one percent a day? Uh -huh. Oh, you talking one percent a year? Are you crazy? Are you you could take my money and give me one? Look, one don't even sound good. Who wants one of anything? Oh, they said one and a half. Oh, you feel better? No, that is crazy. That is crumbs. I'm literally in stuff that pay one percent a day, every day. So while you waiting all year to get your return for your fifty or hundred grand in the bank account, I made it yesterday yesterday and so your money is sitting there corroded in the bank and then so ultimately what happens in the bank it sits there and then you can't even get past inflation your money's the same this year but bread and gas costs more next year doesn't make sense does it and so when you really do the math you're losing money in the bank and i'm not telling you to go run and grab all your money out the bank you pray to god you figure out what he tells you to do but the numbers don't lie. Look at the math. And I'm standing here telling you after a year of doing this, that there's money out there that we can take a chance at because you're taking a chance with any other investment. Mm -hmm. You're losing in the bank. The numbers show that it loses sitting there. No different than if you stuck it under your mattress. Anybody got old mattress money? Don't say that. I don't want nobody come. I don't want nobody come looking under your old mattress. <laughs> No, don't raise no hands on that, right? But that ain't making no money. Right. And so if you don't find a way to let your money work for you, you'll work till you die. And I mean, I'm just just being so completely honest with you. If you don't like it, it's just you don't like it, change it. And that's what we're here for, right? Um, don't love money. I'm not telling you to love money by any means. But you need to use money as a tool in this dominion, in this domain. It makes life easier to have some. And it makes life easier to have a little bit extra so that you can help some other people too. And we're the only ones responsible for doing that. Okay. And so I'm not going to show you a 1% per day project today. I'm going to show you something better. I'm going to show you a project called C12. All right. Now, this C12 project, for those of you that don't know, this actual project pays 12% per day. Y'all hear me? 12% per day. Per day. Every day. Now, it's business days only, though. Let me do say that. Ain't no weekend, so they ain't paying me right now. But... Tonight at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, which is their Hong Kong server time for first thing in the morning, they start paying at 8 p.m. tonight Eastern Standard Time. I start getting paid 12% a day. I've been in this particular project 
since uh, January 21st. Two months ago in March, I came here to the church. A number of people got set up. They still have their money going and they're still working. In this space, you never know how long something's going to last. You don't even know if it's going to work. And C12 is literally the highest paying thing in this space. Now, when I say space, let me clarify space because I haven't clarified space. I'm talking about in the crypto investment passive income space. Let's, so let's break that down. Crypto. What is crypto? Cryptocurrency. It's a digital asset. It's Bitcoin, Ethereum, Litecoin, to name a few. You guys can get it on your cash app. You can get it on Coinbase. You might have some other exchange with cryptocurrency. Now, what is crypto? Crypto is a digital asset. It's a digital dollar per se. Something that I can send to you that has value and you can sell it and use it as money. Doesn't get much better than that. If I took a baseball card that was 100 years old right now, and well, I don't know, baseball been around 100, but let's say 50 years old or however long, right? And then gave you this baseball card. You got to go find somewhere to sell it. It'll look as great as it does in a little plastic case, but until you go find a buyer, it ain't nothing, right? And then you got to agree on price. These digital currencies are always open and available to exchange. There's always a seller and there's always a buyer. Isn't that something? Always a seller, always a buyer, because millions of people are using these currencies. Now, some of you, most of you, have been around prior to the internet. Can you remember the time before the internet? I want to take you back <laughs> before the internet, before cell phones even. I want to take you back a little bit, right? I'm going to give you something that maybe nobody else has told you, right? I don't know if you thought when the internet and you had to dial up that this ain't going nowhere, or, you know, ain't nobody going to do, ain't nobody going through all this, but ain't everybody using it now? Cryptocurrency, you're right now in that same parallel to where the internet was at the very beginning. I'm trying to give you something. You're at the same place where the internet was in its first 10, 15 years. Same growth rate. When you put the chart side by side, they look just alike. So guess what? You're not at the end of something. You're on the beginning of something. People always say, well, if I would have knew then, I would have did this. Or if I knew Google was going to be, I would have got Google. Or if these, I could have, I could have, you could have, would have, should have. Here's another opportunity that's presented to you in your face. And not only does the opportunity present yourself today to, to get inundated, to, to get into what this digital future is, digital assets future, it ain't even going to cost you nothing today. It ain't even going to cost you nothing today. But what I want to see from you, what, what, what the return to me is, is that you understand it. You do your own research. You dive into it. You learn more about it. You position yourself so that no matter what happens with this financial system, you can still be able to operate. I'm all crypto. Things shut down tomorrow. I got cryptocurrency. I'm sending it to Pedro in France, sending it to somebody down the street. I might send it over to my wife, to her crypto wallet. We're making things happen with crypto, silver, gold, crypto, digital assets, because who knows what is going to come? The, the Bible said, who knows what evils, right? What evils? It's going to be bad. So C12, I've been in for four months, folks. It pays 12% a day, business days only. So the way that looks, 12%, let's use easy numbers. If you put $100 in C12, you're going to get $12 a day. That's 12%, easy numbers, right? They're going to do that for 12 days. 12 times 12 is 144. So if you put in 100, after 12 business days, you got 144. That's that, you know what that percentage is? That's 44%. And guess how many days? Two weeks and two days. 
And y'all all told me ain't nobody getting no more than 1% in a year. And so when you make 44% every two weeks, like I have for four months, for four months, four months, four months, that's 90% a month. So if I put in 100, that 100 became 200 in just about a month. Then the next month is 400. Then it's 800. Then it's 1600. And then if I use a method called compounding, compounding means I'm going to take my profits that I made and I'm going to throw it back in there. And then what happens now is not only is my money making money for me, now my profits is making money for me. Y'all with me? That's the goal. The goal is to let your money work for you. You can build businesses. We have them. Thank you, Lord. You can have other investments. We have them. Thank you, Lord. But until you really get your money working for you, you're going to have issues. You're always going to be looking for work. It's never going to be enough. Unless, now, let me, I'm not, I'm not saying that it's never going to be enough. It's going to be very hard for you to have the overflow that you're looking for in your life. Unless something just drops down on you and you, you hit that six figure a year corporate job where you got to work a hundred hours a week to make six figures. You know, that's no life. Yeah. You may want it until you get that and you work in a hundred hours a week to make six figures. You'd be like, this ain't worth it. This is not worth it. Your time is, is money. And then, and then what that money does is allow you to be able to free up the time so that you can do more of the things that you want to do with your family, with your friends. All right. And so C12 is no promises, but profits is 12% a day. And so since you don't, you're making 12% a day, I already told you, you don't get your initial investment back, but you made 44% over that two weeks and two days is, is phenomenal. And now C12 is rapid and profitable investment plan, strong DDO, S shield and access firewall. So what that means is they have all the protections in place to make sure that their website is safe. So that you're there, even if they try to get bombarded by hackers, that they are doing everything to protect you. And then, folks, um, this one I'm presenting to you, you ain't got to tell nobody about it, even though I'm here telling you about it. And when people sign up underneath me, I do receive a financial benefit. I'm telling you right now. But clearly, I'm not here for your financial benefit because I'm going to put the money in for you. So the financial benefit doesn't matter for me because I'm putting the money in for you. However, you, you, you should want to go tell somebody about this stuff. You know why? You go tell them about that new drain. Mm -hmm. You go tell them, mm -hmm. yeah, that's what I need to say. That, that, that new peach Ciroc, right? You know, you, you, you go tell them about that new boo of yours. You go tell them about the new Jays, that new video game. When you think something good, you chances are you're going to go tell at least the people that you say you know and love. Now, if you don't, you're selfish. You're one of them greedy, sneaky people that only want to see yourself okay. You know, do you like that? Or do you want to see everybody shine? I mean, there's haters out here. There's, there's literally haters that don't want anybody to get any advantage any extra because they might have a little more than them or be at the same level of them there's haters out here let me wake you up there's haters Amen. now you got to question your motives if you want to be the only one in your circle with it you should be wanting to take this and not even just necessarily this but financial well-being to all your family and friends now you don't ever chase nobody to help them make no money so let me let me say that again. Don't ever chase nobody to, to help them make money. Now, your kids is a different story. You got a responsibility to help guide them and push them and direct them. And they may not see the light for things, but you do have a responsibility to your children. But your friends and family, that's like, I ain't trying to hear this. Okay, they ain't ready. It's, when you ready, cool, I'm going to be standing here. Guess what I'm going to be doing? Making money. While you sitting around thinking about it, I'm going to be doing it. That's the difference. Now, C12 is incorporated in Hong Kong. 
this particular passive investment platform, crypto passive investment platform. When I say passive, I need to define that. That means you ain't got to do anything. So if you don't tell anybody, which whether you do or don't, you still going to make that 12% a day. Now, that 12% a day breaks down to be 3.6% per day profit. Because remember, I told you, you don't get your initial investment back, but it's paid to you 12% a day for 12 days. And when, when you do the math, and you can do it later, that works out to be your profit per day is 3.6% per day. Per day. Per day. And so how long does it have to last? And so folks, when you do the math and you get 12% a day for eight days, guess what? That's almost all your money back. Like, I can't guarantee how long this is going to last. It's been going for four months. Most people didn't think it was going to be going this long. And, I, and let me back up. It's been going for six months. I've been in it for four months. Some people didn't think it was going to last this long. But guess what? Every day when I look in there, it's more money. Every day. Oh, my goodness. Every day. Thank you, Lord. And then so there's 29,000 people who are in this crypto passive income platform. 29,000 people. You think nobody knew about this? Listen, people have put in over $21 million. So you are getting involved with something that 23,000 other people have decided to try and put millions of dollars in already. Now, I've done all this talking and you have no idea what C12 even does. And so the main activity of C12 is trading digital assets. We talked about this already. Dig digital assets, I've covered this with you. To achieve the best results, they're traders. So they have machines and people that trade. What do you think the parable of the talents was about? Them going out trading those talents to bring back. What do you think they did? Huh? You think they just went and played the lottery? No, they went out and traded and exchanged and made business moves, right? Their traders prefer short positions, performing with automated tools and powerful compounding algorithms that can provide rapid profits in seconds. So anybody know what AI means? What is AI, anybody? Okay, <laughs> let's talk about this. You can't escape it. You got Siri? You got Alexa? No talk to speech. It's artificial. Artificial intelligence. Robots. The robots are coming. They're coming. Automated driving, autonomous driving vehicles, cars to drive by itself. Y'all heard of those? Y'all got one? Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh-huh. AI. The future is here. And either you're going to act like it ain't here or you're going to get with it. For real. You're going to act like it ain't here or you're going to get with it. And I implore you to get with it. I'm going to tell you why. A couple of different reasons. For one, your finances are at stake. So you have a vested interest in getting with what's going on right now. Secondly, even if you feel like, okay, well, I didn't live my life. I'm about to die. What about your kids and grandkids? <laughs> You're so selfish. Get them together. I don't care if you good. I don't care if you good. That means nothing to me. What about your people? Are they good? And so that's where this comes into play. And then NFTs. You may not know what an NFT is, but it's a non-fungible token. What it is is digital art. It's a way to transfer large value of wealth. You think the Mona Lisa, you know, these famous paintings by Picasso, there's digital art going for multi-millions. And I can transfer it in the blink of an eye. You ain't got to come to the Louvre in France to see this artwork. Or is it the Louvre? I'm not sure. Okay, so let me continue. I'm almost done. 
And then it says, which is given a new life to cryptocurrencies. These are NFTs by combining art, value, collection, and digital technology has also triggered smart upgrades in their yielding mechanisms. Such proprietary tools help you stay on top of the online investment market, thus putting C12 at the forefront of the industry. And then so folks, um, the name of C12 or carnelian comes from the Latin word meaning flesh. Ain't that crazy? Come from the Latin word meaning flesh, which perhaps speaks to its reminder that we are flesh and blood and we should make the most of here and now. We should make the most of here and now. The number 12 is considered a master number. That's obvious as a master number. 12 sons of Israel, right? Also, Ishmael had 12 sons. That number 12 is a master number and associated actually with spiritual enlightenment. I'm not taking y'all no down no Buddhist quest or anything like that, but people have been enlightened since Hebrew times, okay? Without getting into Buddhism, all right? And self-awakening. You gotta wake yourself up. You're walking around in darkness. What do you think? When darkness, you sleep, right? You're walking around in darkness. Have no idea what is going on. That's darkness. Now, um, Carnelian, known also as the Sunset Stone, was used for building personal power and confidence. You don't want personal power and confidence? With brave warriors wearing it in battle. Think about it. What the Bible say? Put on your whole armor. Because we're battlers. We're warriors. And we fight in multiple different arenas. As an ancient stone of fertility, and not that you're trying to get pregnant, fertility is growth in other areas besides the womb. This name reflects the nature of the platform's trading mechanism capable to generate incomparable results within the most effective niches available today. Now, if you decide that you are going to share this phenomenal project with anybody, the company does pay you 5% for every single dollar that somebody brings in. You like commissions? You like telling somebody and getting paid for it? Great, they're going to reward you. So somebody starts with 100, you get $5. They start with 1,000, you get 50. They start with 10 grand, you're going to get 500. They start with 100 grand, you're going to get what I do. Hold on, help me with the math. What's that? Hold on, help me. It's 50 grand? Oh, 5,000. Thank you. I'm using pretty better math. Better math. They come in with a million, it's 50K. Now, for Carnelian 12, the minimal investment to get started, $12. It's just $12. So you ain't got to act like, oh, I... it's, it's $12. You're going to spend that truly at Five Guys. Yeah. Burger and fry, about 15. Yeah, that's right. That's right. About 15. I said $12. You can take a chance with that. You don't buy a $20 lottery ticket. 20. I know you tried a 20, or you don't buy $21. You didn't try it. You done been to the casino and stuck just 20 in the machine. I know you have. You don't put it on a blackjack tape one time. I know you have. I have. I know you have. Bingo hall. And the bingo hall. Thank you, Mom. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. That's right. Thank you. Thank you for telling the truth. And so these investments, I always tell people to look them at it like your casino trip that, you know, we've enjoyed as believers, the bingo halls that we've enjoyed as believers, that lottery ticket that we've enjoyed as believers. And when you make some money, pay your tithes. Pay some tithes. So take some and do something else with it. Be that faithful steward. That's what the point is, right? And then, folks, if you really build your levels out in C12 and, like, you go hog wild and you recruit a lot of people, they change that first tier, which was 5% to 7%. Now, they also pay you for other people that you tell. 
So I tell you, you tell somebody else, you get paid on who the people you tell tell. Mm -hmm. Then they even pay you another level on who your people tell and they tell and they tell. So three levels deep, five, two, and one. But when you get to $100,000 in people under you, and now you might be thinking, oh, like, yeah, 100,000 in people under you. I did that in like the first month. And so my first level went to seven grand. And so think about it. I had got paid on $100,000 in people that I directly told. And so I made a $5,000 commission in that first 30 days. I know some people don't make five grand a month. I made 5,000 in commission because I decided to tell other people about something I thought was great. Now, I'm not making no promises. I'm being honest, telling people the risk of anything you invested. But this investment has worked out. And when you think about eight days to get even, and then four more days for profit, your risk is less. Yeah. And then if you take your money, your profit you made, and just reinvest some of your profit, then what you're doing is playing with house money. Mm -hmm. And you can't lose. Mm -hmm. And that's the way I do all my investments. I jump in, I get my initial capital back off the table. So I invest a thousand. I want to see how quickly I can get that thousand back. Once I get that thousand back, then I'm playing with anything else's profits. That's house money. It's like when you go to this casino, you got a hundred, you got 500, you put the hundred back in your pocket, you got 400, it's house money. You know what I mean? It's the same thing. And so that's what I do with these programs is I play with the house money and then I diversify. Diversification is key. I'm telling you about one today, I'm in 40. Not just 140. If I'm wrong about this, because I can be wrong about anything and it's gone, guess what? I got another 39 mm -hmm. making me money. And I'm going to keep adding to that pile because diversification in any investment portfolio is key. And then so you get to 721 once you get 100,000 people under you. What I'm telling you to do, if you want to share this, you want to build the team, I'll work with you. I'll help you do it. I don't expect you to be me. I expect you to learn it, understand it, what you have your money invested in, gift or not, and just do your own due diligence to read through it. And once you feel good about it or good enough to tell somebody, I think you should tell somebody. Then your goal should be to have 20 people under you. 20. I have 1,500 people under me. So the goal that I'm setting for you is very achievable. 20. And then what you're doing is you're exposing 20 people to the opportunity. And then guess what? They're going to go tell 20. They're going to go tell 20. They're going to go tell 20. The next thing you know, you got hundreds of people in your organization because you went out and told 20. And then you make money off of every single deposit, all those other hundreds of people make in your organization. Every time they make a deposit, you ain't got to do nothing. It's automatic. And it only costs how much, y'all? Get started? $12. Can't believe it. And so from that, I believe that C12 presents a phenomenal opportunity to introduce people to what? Crypto, digital assets, passive income, investments. And it only going to cost $12. I, I mean, I'll take anybody out to eat and spend $12 on a meal. I'm just being honest. But I would rather take that $12 and invest it in something that's going to bring you a return. You're going to be hungry in four hours. That's right. So I want to try to teach you something. All right. Um, and then, folks, I, I do want to share some of my success with C12 since I've been in it. Um, and the, all this stuff is on the website. You'll be able to see it with your own two eyes. Um, I have some of the highest people that have put money in with me. So I'm the big dog. So there's nobody else bigger than me in this company as far as telling other people. And I got in a couple months late. I didn't even think it would last this long. It's still here, right? So thank you, Lord. And so um, I have, as of today, the highest investor has invested 116000 So one investor out of the 1500 that I have has invested $116,000. I made just five grand off of him, one investor, right? And then four months, I've made $103,000. Hallelujah. Y'all ain't never seen me praise dance, right? Y'all ain't never seen me do this, huh? Hey! hey. Oh. Oh. Y'all ain't never seen me do that. 
Y'all ain't never seen me do that. Y'all ain't never seen me do that. But y'all seen it today. It's 100K. Y'all seen it today. It's 100K. You would probably praise dance too. And if you can't, you better find it in you. Because I thank the Lord for it. Because if I knew how to do that, I'd have been did that. If I knew how to make 100K in four months, I'd have been did that. Man, like a million times over. I would have been telling y'all about this years ago, right? So that 100K came four months and it's still cranking out dollars. When this thing light up tonight, I got another 3,000 sitting there. Now, network built. I told you, once you get to 100 grand, you go up to 7% on that top line. You got to put in a request, but they'll they'll take you up, get 7% of every dollar, right? That people come in, 721. Thank the Lord, that 1,500 people team, $3 million. Three million. Four hundred sixty-one thousand and twenty-nine dollars and sixty-nine cents in four months that people in my team have invested. Crazy when you put that in perspective. Crazy. And then, so what does that mean for me? I make about two thousand a day per day. <laughs> per day from C twelve. From C twelve. Very thankful. Now, I don't pull it all out and do any because I'm investing. You know, I'm flipping it. I'm pulling down profits. I'm doing this. But because of the blessing of building that type of team over four months, literally five days a week, when I log into my dashboard, there's a fresh, you know, how mercies renew every morning. Ah, uh, Yeah, every morning. I look at C12. It's two grand there. That's thank you, mercy. Hallelujah. And but it, I ain't going to spend it on lavish things. I ain't even bought a suit in two years, folks. I don't know if you notice I'm wearing the same stuff all the time. <laughs> I ain't even bought a suit in two years. No, it might be three. Uh, I don't know. It's been a couple of years. I'm wearing the same stuff. I ain't even bought no Nikes. I got Nike gift cards at home, right? My daughter got them for my birthday last August. I still ain't using Nike gift cards because it's not about that. Those are materialistic things, right? I, I got a basement full of shoes. When I pass away, somebody's going to have them Nikes, right? <laughs> I'm just being honest, right? Somebody's going to have them Nikes, right? But the materialistic side of things can only go so far. And then you got to be looking for future things that you could truly hand out. And right now, we're just trying to figure out how we can pass around what we do have, right? So that's C12. Um, so today, we're going to get everybody set up. It's 1040. I went way longer than what I expected today. Um, I'm going to turn this around real quick here, um, just so that um, if you guys, I'm going to just turn this around here, take off this screen share, and then choose virtual background. I'm going to take these off here, and then I'm going to turn this around, and then if you guys can just wave to this at the end, because you were in the financial class today, and then we're going to close this thing out in prayer. And I'm not sure if if you can see yourself in there. And if you can see yourself in there, can you wave? Can you see yourself? All right. And then if you can see yourself, if you can just wave when you see yourself, whenever you see yourself, just wave. I'm coming down. Can you see yourself and wave? Can you see yourself down there and wave? All right. I need y'all. Can y'all see yourself and wave? All right. Can y'all see yourself and wave? All right. Thank you very much for uh, the presentation. We're going to get everybody set up on C12 right now. Uh, but let us close out in prayer. Uh, Father, you've been good to us. We thank you very much for uh, your word. We thank you for your instruction, your guidance, your preparation. Father, we thank you for the ears that are listening, for the ears that will hear. Father, I pray that this brings you glory. I want people to come running to you and say, Father, you did it. I thank you. Hallelujah. Because you get the glory for it. And Father, we pray that we'll be faithful stewards of everything you bless us with. And Father, to us uh, who are faithful over the few, we pray that you make us rulers over many. And to whom much is given, much is required, Father, and we accept that responsibility in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Let me do this here.